Hey guys, today we're going to have a look at simplifying algebraic fractions. In order to grasp this topic, you're going to need to have a pretty strong base already in simplifying fractions and factorizing quadratics. Let's get started. These first three examples are fractions which could easily be simplified given that you have the basic background knowledge of how to simplify a fraction. You need to find the highest common factor of both the numerator and denominator and divide both the numerator and denominator by that value. The first fraction we've got here, 18 over 72, isn't even an algebraic fraction. There are no variables in this fraction, they're only number values. So we just need to find the highest common factor that we can divide both 18 and 72 by, and that will be a number. That number is 18. 18 divided by 18 is 1, and 72 divided by 18 is 4, so that's going to give us 1 quarter as a simplified fraction. The second fraction, 16a over 12b, is an algebraic fraction. See the variables a and b. Nonetheless, we simplify it in the same way. We find the highest common factor, and when there are numbers and variables involved, you should be looking at both of them. But in this case, we can only find a high, highest common factor, which is a number. 16 and 12 can both be divided by 4. 16 divided by 4 is 4, and 12 divided by 4 is 3. So our simplified fraction will be 4a over 3b. The last fraction looks like the most complicated one on this screen right now, but it's far from the most complicated algebraic fraction we'll be asked to simplify in this lesson. So hopefully you understand how to simplify algebraic fractions to this level. Still, we can find a highest common factor. We can find some number or variable or a combination of the both that we can divide both the top and the bottom by. Starting by looking at my numbers, 14 and 21, those numbers both divide by 7. And then looking at my letters, x and y, well, obviously both the top and bottom could be divided by x and y. The top has actually got x to the power of 3 and y to the power of 2, while the bottom has got x and y to the power of 3. So the highest common factor, the highest power of these variables that both the top and bottom could be divided by is x and y squared. So I can divide the numbers both by 7 and the letters both by x because this one only has a power of 1 and y squared because this one has a power of y squared. This one has more than that, but I can't divide both by y to the power of 3. So dividing both top and bottom by their highest common factor, and this time it's both a number and variable term, that's going to be 2x squared over 3y. I did the 14 divided by the 7 gave me the 2. The x cubed divided by the x cancelled out one of these x's, so it's x squared. And the y squared divided by the y squared got rid of my y. On the bottom, 21 divided by the 7 gave me the 3. x divided by the x cancelled out the x. And y to the power of 3 divided by y to the power of 2 just left me with a single y term. Now. Be careful. Don't even copy this down. Do not cross out to cancel. Unfortunately, a lot of people see other people doing this. They see, I've got a fraction here. I'm looking for a common factor, top and bottom. I see 5ABC. I see 25ABC. Ah, top's got 5ABC. Bottom's got 5ABC. I'll just cross those out. And that must leave me with nothing on the top and a 2 on the bottom. That is not right. Do not copy that down. Looking at this over here, and this is the level we need to get to today, I see on the top I've got x plus 3, I see on the bottom I've got x squared plus 4x plus 3. Do not just say x plus 3, ah, x plus 3, I'll cross those out, and that's going to leave you with nothing on the top, and x squared plus 3x on the bottom. That is not how we simplify fractions. What you've done there is you've taken away the x plus 3 on the top and taken away the x plus 3 on the bottom. We don't subtract. We need to find a fact, common factor so we can divide both the top and bottom. So we need to use our skills in factorizing quadratics to find out what we can divide both the top and bottom by. So let's look at those two examples again, doing this the right way. So you can feel free to copy this down now. We factorize to divide. We do not subtract. So although we could probably find the highest common factor for the numerator and denominator here, I'm going to show you how we can factor something out of the top and factor the same thing out of the bottom, and that way we can divide both top and bottom by the same value. 
Now looking at these numbers, I can divide both the top and bottom by 5. Looking at the letter A, I can divide both top and bottom by A. Looking at B's, I can divide the top by B to the power of 3 and the bottom by B to the power of 3 as well. And looking at the C's, I can divide them both by just C. So I'm going to factor that out. 5, A, B cubed, and C. See there on the top? When I factor out the 5, A, B cubed, and C, I left inside that bracket B, C squared. If I were to multiply that back through, you would see that this would turn into the original numerator. 5, A, B times B makes B to the power of 4, and C times C squared makes C to the power of 3. And the same thing with the bottom here. I factored out 5, A, B cubed, C, and if I just multiplied that by this 5 here, it would give me 25, A, B cubed, C, the same as I originally had in the denominator. The reason I did that is so that I can clearly see that if I divide both the top and the bottom by the common factor, which I've just factored out, 5, A, B cubed, C, that I'd be left with what's inside these brackets, B, C squared over 5. Now that was pretty basic, and you didn't need to follow this method in order to do that. You could probably have just looked at the fraction originally and seen that you could divide top and bottom by 5a b cubed c. But that gives us a good introduction into what we need to do over here. Now looking at this fraction, it's very difficult to see what we could divide both the top and the bottom by. In fact, the top doesn't look like it could be divided by anything apart from 1. So let's look at the bottom. It's a quadratic. We can factorize a quadratic, and what factorizing means, by definition, is finding the two values that this quadratic could divide into, or the two expressions it could divide into. So I'm going to factorize the quadratic on the bottom. I know that it starts with x squared, so in both my brackets I'm going to have x and then x, and I need to find the two numbers that add to make 4 and multiply to make 3. Starting with the numbers that multiply to make 3, there are only two numbers I can think of. 1 times 3 makes 3 and those numbers do add to make 4. So there, I factorize the bottom, x plus 3 and x plus 1. Now look at my fraction, though. Can you see my common factor? I can divide both the top by x plus 3 and the bottom by x plus 3. So if I go ahead and do that, what will be left on the top? If I divide this expression by itself, it doesn't leave me with 0, it leaves me with 1. If I divide the bottom by x plus 3, this x plus 3 is going to turn into 1, so it'll just be 1 times x plus 1. So on the bottom, I'll have x plus 1. This is where you might have seen this crossing out method. I don't particularly like it because a lot of people think that once they cross this out, that leaves us with 0 on the top. And as we just explained, that leaves us with 1 on the top. So this ends up being 1 over x plus 1. Let's just clarify, how do we simplify algebraic fractions? Well, first of all, we need to look for that common factor for the numerator and denominator. Now, this might be a number factor, like 2, divide both top and bottom by 2, or any other number. A variable or letter factor, like dividing both top and bottom by x, or maybe even x squared or x cubed. Or it might be both a number and variable factor, like 5x or 7x squared or 2ab. Or in the hardest cases, it might be an expression in brackets. Now that's generally the case when you've got a quadratic as your numerator or denominator. Then you would need to factorize that quadratic, and you'll find that your factors that you can divide that quadratic by are some expression in brackets. Then once you've got your common factor, you'll divide both the numerator and denominator by that common factor. Let's have a look at a couple more examples. So here I've got clearly a quadratic in the numerator. I've got an x squared term, an x term, and a number term. So the first thing I'm going to do is try and factorize that to see if I can divide both the top and the bottom by some expression in brackets. This is a really good hint here for you. If you have trouble factorizing a quadratic and you're told in a question that you need to simplify this fraction, you should expect one of the brackets of the factorized format of that quadratic to match the expression that you've got on the bottom there. So I'm already going to think, a number that multiplies to make negative 30, is it possible that one of the numbers is 3? What would the other number be? Negative 10. And 3 minus 10 makes negative 7. So those are my numbers. I found that easily because I've got this hint here on the bottom. 
x plus 3 times x minus 10 would multiply out to make the top quadratic. And look at the bottom, x plus 3. I've got a common factor top and bottom. I'm going to divide them both by x plus 3 in brackets. If I divide the top by x plus 3, the x plus 3 would cancel out. I'm not going to cross that out, though. I'm just going to say that will turn to 1, and then that would be 1 times x minus 10. And on the bottom, if I divide by x plus 3, that x plus 3 that I have on the bottom will turn to 1, which means that this isn't a fraction anymore, because x minus 10 over 1 would just be x minus 10. So that was an easy one to start with. Let's have a look at question E, which is a more challenging one. I've got a quadratic on the top and a quadratic on the bottom. So there goes my idea of having that hint on the bottom to help me factorize. Now, what I've got on the top is really quite a difficult quadratic. Because I've got a number in front of the x squared term, I'm not just going to start setting up my bracket with x and x in it. But look carefully. Remember our trick? If there's a number in front of the x squared term, see if we can factor that number out of all terms. And in this case, we can. So I'm going to factor the 2 out, and then I'll see the quadratic that's left over to factorize. The bottom quadratic, though, is fairly straightforward to, sim to factorize. I need to multiply to make 1 and add to make 2. I can only think of one pair of numbers that multiplies to make 1, and that's 1 times 1. And 1 plus 1 does make 2. So there we have it. The top, fac top uh, quadratic, I factored out the 2. See, that would be 2 times x squared, 2x squared. 2 times 5x would make the 10x, and 2 times 4 makes the 8. And on the bottom, I factorize that quadratic and that turned into x plus 1 times x plus 1, because 1 times 1 makes 1, and 1 plus 1 makes 2. Right, so now I need to factorize the top quadratic here. It's going to be 2 times, and then I'll have a bracket times a bracket. Now that I've got rid of the number that's in front of the x squared, I can set up my brackets as being x in one bracket and x in the other. And I'm finding two numbers that add to make 5 and multiply to make 4. What numbers multiply to make 4? 1 and 4 and 2 and 2. 1 plus 4 makes 5, so that's my pair. So I've got here x plus 4, x plus 1. That would multiply out to be this quadratic here. I've got my 2 out front like I had before, and now I'm looking at my fraction and I see my common factor. I've got x plus 1 on the top, and I've got x plus 1 times x plus 1 on the bottom. I can only divide both top and the bottom by the highest common factor. So although I've got x plus 1 squared down here on the bottom, I can only divide by x plus 1 once because I've only got x plus 1 once on the top. So dividing by x plus 1 will leave me with 2 times x plus 4 on the top and just x plus 1 on the bottom. Now to fully simplify this fraction, though, I shouldn't leave this bracket like this. I should expand it out. So I'm going to make that 2x plus 8 over x plus 1. Having looked at it in this format, though, I know I couldn't factorize it anymore. I couldn't divide it by any other common factor, so this is my simplified fraction. Here's some questions for you to try on your own, and these are level one questions. Notice that here I haven't given you any quadratics that you need to factorize. You just need to find the highest common factor for both the numerator and denominator. Watch out because it could be a number or a letter or both, and pay attention to the powers of the letters. So take a minute now, hit pause if you need to, and the answers will come up in just a moment. Okay, I hope you've had a chance to hit pause. Here come the answers. Now here's level two questions. These ones are a little bit more challenging because as you can see, we do have some, they look like quadratics with the x squared here on the bottom. That looks like a quadratic, it's got an x squared in it. That looks like it could be a quadratic, it's got an x squared in it. But they're not the hardest kinds of quadratics to factorize. So go ahead and give these a try. Again, hit pause and take the time that you need. Okay, hope you've had a chance to hit pause. Here come the answers. On to level three. Now here we've got quadratics both top and bottom, and they're slightly more challenging quadratics to factorize. So go ahead and give these a go. Factorize both top and bottom and see what your common factors are. Divide by those common factors and simplify the fraction.
Go ahead and hit pause if you need time. All right, I hope you're ready for the answers. Here they come. And finally, we're ready for level four. Here we've got some really difficult or more complicated quadratics to factorize. Go ahead and factorize both the top and the bottom, find your common factors, and simplify your fractions. Okay, I hope you had enough time. Here you go with the answers. Now what we've been working on today really is challenging, so if you've come into any mistakes in your answers, please don't just copy down the answers. Let me know and see if I can help you, or go back over it and have a look at your working. Maybe you just had a problem with your pluses or minuses. Those are the most common mistakes when trying to factorize quadratics.